Everest doesn't discriminate based on dietary choices. Everest will kill you no matter what you eat. That's a quote from Vegan Shaming, A Tragic Death on Mount Everest Reveals an Ugly Truth About How We Treat Vegans. It's written by James Fell for AskMen.com, and it's one of the few uh, reasonable articles written about Maria Stratum, the uh, experienced climber and also vegan, who recently died attempting to summit uh, Mount Everest. Um, this is another one. This one written for Men's Journal is another reasonable one as well as this one for The Independent. Other less reasonable articles have attempted to tie uh, Maria's death to her vegan diet with like clickbaity kind of titles like this one for The Washington Post. And then others have taken it even further, just outright stating that it was veganism that killed Maria. Uh, and then even mocking her for it. Besides being in just incredibly poor taste, uh, this is obviously nonsense because we know how Maria died. Altitude sickness. Altitude sickness doesn't discriminate based on dietary choices. Anyone, even the strongest of the mountaineers and Sherpas, can get it. Eating meat or not has no bearing. That's a quote from Kuntal Joysher, I believe is how you say it, from uh, his Instagram account. And he actually successfully summited Mount Everest just right around the time of Maria's attempt, I believe like the day before. Uh, interestingly enough, he has been vegan for over a decade. And uh, I highly recommend learning more about his experience with Everest. There is a piece I've included in the description on it. So it seems that the problem that some people have with Maria, uh, besides just the mere fact that she's vegan, because that's like seriously problematic for some people, um, is her reasoning, uh, her, her reason for uh, wanting to climb Mount Everest, at least part of her reason, uh, which was to counter the notion that vegans are weak and malnourished. And by climbing these seven summits, she and her husband wanted to prove that vegans can do anything and more. Hence the slightly snarky tone given to many of these headlines, which is, as others have pointed out, would never be used in most other situations. Like if we took the headline for the Washington Post and replaced uh, vegan with girls, you know, so woman trying to prove girls can do anything among four dead on Mount Everest, people would be furious and rightly so. Or let's say the scenario were reversed and it was a, you know, meat eating Everest climber who died and it was vegans writing headlines like famous anti-vegan omnivore who climbed Mount Everest. Yep, she died. Again, people would be furious and rightly so. And speaking of furious, Furious Pete got cancer and vegans rejoiced. Unfortunately, such a scenario in which vegans mock someone's you know, personal tragedy because that someone is a meat eater uh, is not at all hard to imagine because we've actually already seen it. When uh, YouTuber competitive eater Furious Pete was diagnosed with testicular cancer for the second time, uh, some vegans showed no sympathy. Uh, Furious Pete deserves cancer this time. Go vegan. That is the actual title to an actual video. And there were at least a couple other videos from vegans with similar titles and similar content. Again, mocking uh, someone's personal uh, tragedy because they eat meat. Sound familiar? The Vegan Gains uh, response, his video, it, it almost makes Crowder's trashy article about Maria look uh, mature by comparison. Oh, so sad. Now, some vegans may argue that, you know, the scenario involving uh, Pete, that that situation is completely different from the one involving uh, Maria, uh, that, you know, Pete had it coming, not only because he refused to go vegan, but also for mocking vegans and animal abuse and making a profit doing so. First, we have all done insensitive things. We've all done things that we regret, every single one of us. If every person who did something insensitive deserved cancer, we would all deserve cancer. You know, mocking someone's cancer diagnosis, death, whatever, uh, because they did something that you deem insensitive and crazy is insensitive and crazy. Second, in terms of dangerous activities, mountaineering beats competitive eating by a ridiculous margin. You know, attempting to summit Mount Everest specifically has something like a 5% death rate, whereas competitive eating is pretty tame. Pete essentially had a stroke of bad luck, whereas Maria 
put herself in danger by choice. You know, she she knew the risk, of course, to herself. She knew the risk to others if she needed to be rescued. She knew the risk of, you know, leaving grief-stricken family members and friends behind if she didn't succeed. Any Everest climber does. They know this, right? Um, that doesn't make the situation any less tragic, and it certainly shouldn't in Pete's case either. Not all vegans and not all meat eaters. So I'm sure some of you are thinking, yeah, the Furious Pete thing was shitty, but that wasn't all vegans, that was just a, a vocal minority. I agree, it's something I've talked about a lot on this channel, and it's something that I think can be said about most communities. You know, most people, uh, most individuals within a community, so in this case, you know, most vegans, um, are pretty normal, right? Non-aggressive, reasonable people, right? Um, unfortunately, they tend not to be as vocal as the less reasonable, uh, more offensive minority. And if we believe this about the vegan community and people in general, that means that meat eaters in general are no exception. It means that when these militant vegans paint the average omnivore as not just someone who eats meat, but someone who is anti-vegan, someone who enjoys um, the fact that the meat is a dead animal, right? And they would love to slaughter the animal themselves, right? They would find pleasure in it. Um, when these vegans paint the average meat eater this way, they are no better. <laughs> they are just as bad as the true anti-vegans, the real anti-vegans who paint the average vegan as angry, militant, misanthropic, elitist, anti-science, etc. Both sides are wrong. And the two scenarios I just spoke about involving uh, Pete and Stridum are actually uh, good examples of that. You know, yes, some vegans made awful videos and remarks uh, about Pete after he got cancer the second time, but many more responded to these calling them out on it. Yes, some meat eaters used Maria's death to gain clicks or even as an excuse to mock vegans, but many more called them out on it. Even on that Crowder trash, the majority of the commenters did not find it amusing. So ultimately, I don't think the coverage of Maria's death was really that much worse, more extreme than what the media normally does, which is to uh, look for ways to make the headline as appealing as possible, even if that means being just totally insensitive in the process. Um, in terms of reporting on veganism and vegetarianism specifically, we have certainly seen worse examples of yellow journalism. Uh, just recently, there was the whole vegetarianism mental illness link that I talked about in this video. Then there was the fabulous lettuce is worse for the environment than bacon, all those great articles. I have a video on that as well. And then very, very recently, uh, there was the scary sounding yet totally non-existent vegetarianism gene that causes cancer and heart disease. I don't have a video on that, but there is a great article uh, on it that I have linked to in the description. The difference between the articles I just mentioned and the articles about Maria, you know, the, the ones on environment and health, they were widely shared, but in Maria's case, you know, her death, it, it hit a nerve of real empathy with, with virtually everyone, you know, and so of course it made the obviously anti-vegan shock jocks like Steven Crowder, not that he cares, but it made him look like an asshole, right? And some of these others as well, but it also made the you know, the ones that didn't go as far, obviously they didn't claim that it was veganism that caused her death or anything like that, but the ones that were willing to sacrifice tact for clicks, right, uh, with their titles, it made them look bad as well. So again, um, I wanted to do this video really just for the comparison between Pete and uh, and Maria and, you know, talk about advocacy. If we want people to take veganism seriously and not uh, to see us as just purity-driven, elitist, cult followers, um, we need to stop letting the vegans who define us that way speak for us. You know, don't let the crowders of the vegan community uh, run their mouths without speaking out against it. Um, don't let them define us to the world with pseudoscience either. Um, as Jenny Messina, the vegan RD, as she writes in her article, Yes, Vegans Can Climb Mount Everest, we can eventually put it into these clickbait stories by assuring health professionals and the media that vegans know how to eat healthfully. 
That means embracing the science that allows us to do that, even when recommendations aren't especially popular. We can also put an end to these clickbait stories and vegan shaming in general by assuring the media and non-vegans that vegans really are compassionate and that we care about all animals not just the non-human ones. We can do this not only by not making videos mocking meat eaters with serious illnesses, but also by speaking out when we see this happening. You know, as I talked about before, I talked about in the last video, uh, you know, people regularly contact me saying that other vegans, while they turn them off, my videos convince them to go, you know, eat less meat, go vegetarian, go vegan, whatever. It's, it's important to be a counterexample to the crazy. That's basically it. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Obviously, if you have any comments or questions, you can leave them down below. And uh, I guess it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will have a new video very soon.